Good evening and welcome to the budget workshop. It is Tuesday, April 21st. If you do not have your phones muted, please mute them. Jerry, we may need to take the speakers down. I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order and determine uh, the quorum. I have to mute it. They can't hear. Jerry, can you turn down the volume some, please? Just a moment, folks. We've got some technical difficulties here. Uh, I, I, whenever I mute it, it goes away. Right. Let's just not do the speakers overhead if possible. All right, hang on. I think that's going to get rid of our feedback issue. Sorry, folks. All right. Okay, we're going to try this again. Just a moment. My phone's not in it. No, but your phone's here. Mm, same place it was before, no. last time. Shouldn't be my phone. It was coming from those speakers, though. Somebody ain't muted. Microphone on that computer. Is it volume up too high? Well, I just muted it. Mm. Okay. Where's the mouse? Ready for okay. me to try it? You can try it. You can do it with this. Okay. Give me just a second. I'll try it. This is just a test, and looks like that resolved our issue. Let's see if everybody can hear me. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, that's Randolph. I can hear you. Okay. Let's do a roll call of those participating by teleconference. I will call the names of the members, and if you are on the conference call, please signify by stating present. Vice Mayor Brown. Present. Alderman Church. Present. Alderman Jones. Present. Alderman No. Present. We have five present, therefore we have a quorum. Just a few housekeeping issues before we continue. We need to document that we are conducting this meeting by electronic means due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and it is necessary to protect the public health, safety, and welfare of the citizens, city employees, and elected officials from possible exposure to the virus. This meeting was advertised in the Murfreesboro Post on Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. The meeting packets were distributed electronically to the member to the board members yesterday, and paper copies were available today. I will ask all board members to be courteous and not interrupt others when they are speaking. If you need to speak, please ask to be recognized by me. After the caption is read for each item, um, we we'll discuss it. If there's any questions, Phyllis can address those with each budget item. Uh, tonight, we we'll have the general fund and nonprofits, state and capital project um, equipment and requests. Additional personnel will be discussed at the budget workshop next Monday. Staff is proposing any cost of living or any raises at this time. Um, be held due to the unknown revenue impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Staff will continue to work with our compensation analyst regarding the compensation study and cost of living increases that might be an option for January 1st, 2021. But we need to see how the revenues are doing at that time. Ultimately, though, this is a BOMA decision as to when any raises will be considered for employees. So at this point, um, Phyllis will go through the line item budget for each department. Then she will pause and we will allow for any questions at the uh, about that department at the time. Phyllis? 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, like the Mayor said, we will be going over the general fund budget. Uh, we will start with the general fund revenues. Um, you should be able to see that um, worksheet on your screen. We'll start, um, we'll go through all of the revenues and at the very end of the revenues, we'll uh, stop and have a question and answer segment. Um, I'd like to start now with the first section of the budget. Um, starting with the property taxes. Give me just one minute, Phyllis. If anyone would please mute your phones when you're not speaking. We've got this issue again. <laughs> she muted herself. That's what it, I think. All right, right now. I can't move it. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Phyllis. Starting with the uh, property taxes, um, we have estimated um, the property taxes to come in at around $8 million. And how we came at that number, we took the assessed value, which is $1.1 million, and multiplied that by the um, property tax rate of 71 cents, which gives us a little over $8 million, plus or minus any pickup in property taxes, minus any delinquent, unpaid, um, possible bankruptcy um, write-offs. Um, we don't feel that the economy will affect the property taxes because property taxes won't be due until next February. We feel like, um, you know, we may have some foreclosures possibility, but that's unknown. And if we do have those, most likely the banks are going to be paying for the property taxes. Um, whoever's holding that note. Um, down into the delinquent section, um, we are um, going to rebudget uh, 25,000 for the uh, delinquent first year taxes, 10 for the second year, three for the third year, 1,500 for the fourth year, 600 for the fifth year, 500 for the sixth year, 100 for the seventh year, 100 for the eighth year, and then $100 for any prior years uh, beyond the eight. Um, um, penalties and interest for property taxes, uh, we're estimating that to be at $32,000. Uh, going on down to payment in lieu of taxes, uh, utilities, we're estimating that to be at $130,000. Uh, if you look at how we ended the year in 1819 at the one thirty-seven, um, you know, I kept that a little bit under the one thirty-seven and left it at one thirty. dollars uh, Payments in lieu of taxes, TVA, just looking at our for, uh, forecast in our prior year, uh, we estimate the budget to be 440000 Local sales tax, we took um, what we thought that we would um, generally uh, receive next year and reduced that by 10%. This is one of the unknowns. We um, are, you know, are not 100% sure what's going to happen with this line item. Um, you'll see that we're forecasting around $9 million. Um, we took that down 10%, which gave us uh, right about $8.1 million. And, you know, we've looked at trends of what other cities and counties and what's been recommended by other agencies. And, um, you know, we're hoping we don't drop below that, but as of right now, we're budgeting $8.1 million. Uh, we budgeted uh, $3,500 for the wholesale um, beer, or the beer privilege tax. Um, we budgeted 490000 for the uh, wholesale beer tax at 17 percent, we budgeted 180 thousand for the liquor tax, and you know these um, our budgets were generated off of looking at the actuals for last year, looking at the forecast for this year, and then estimating business taxes. We did drop that down a little bit. You know we don't know um, how many businesses are going to not reopen. Uh, hopefully we don't have that, but we did uh, reduce that a little bit because you can see we were. Um, um, receiving about $1.2 million, and we dropped that down to $1 million. Um, business license and permits, um, we estimated the, that to be around 3000 The cable TV franchise for Comcast, 
Um, it averages about 280. That's what we budgeted. The AT&T, it's averaged about 8,500. We budgeted that. Um, uh, cable franchise for the uh, Tennessee Telephone or the TDS, uh, we budgeted about 85. And these are just generally averages of the last few years. Hotel, motel tax, we did take that down a little bit. Um, our actual for last year was almost 85. We're forecasting about 81 this year, so we kind of met in the middle. And, um, you know, we only have about four hotels, and we're thinking that the, those were probably uh, sustained pretty good, and, and uh, we only dropped it down to 75. Down in the permit section, for application fees for beer and liquor license, we did 500 um, for each of those line items. For the privilege tax for liquor, uh, we estimate about 2,000. Building permits, um, we dropped that down to about 250,000. Again, these are some of the unknowns um, that were, don't have 100% accuracy of what that number should be. Plumbing permits, we uh, set the budget at 20,000, mechanical 18,000, plan reviews at 50,000, inspection fees at 500, other permits at 45,000. Down in the state revenues, um, we received uh, funding from gr the um, Office of Justice Vest Grant Program. We estimate that to be about 8,000. On the uh, DEA reimbursement for overtime, uh, we estimate about 8,000 on that line item. The uh, state grant, which is the fire training and the police training, uh, supplemental pays that we receive from the state that gets dispersed to, amongst each of the um, qualified members of the fire and police for uh, fire department. The for the fire and police, the rate has gone up. It was $600 last year. It went up to $800 this year, and my understanding is it's going up to $1,000 per qualified recipient for next year. So we have about um, we have about 49 qualified fire um, employees, and so that's 49,000. We have about 57 police um, officers that will uh, be qualified for that. So. Uh, that's how we come up with that number. This next uh, item is a, the governor's grant, um, $820,470. We have received notification from the state that um, we, our portion of the governor's grant will be the 820, and there are specific items that can be purchased with that money. It's uh, basically only going to allow to be used for capital, uh, public safety, road projects, um, and there's also a list within that. Um, so that will be, um, you know, part of our discussion on Monday when we get to capital projects. State sales tax, we drop that down to uh, 2.7 or uh, 2,750,000. Uh, we're averaging about 3 million. We um, per the, per MTAS, uh, we went ahead and dropped that down um, to the rate that they had suggested. Um, state income tax, uh, which is the hall tax, that tax is actually phasing out, but we're still being uh, still receiving a portion of that. Um, beer tax is uh, we estimate about fifteen thousand. Alcohol uh, beverage tax about fourteen thousand. The state gasoline inspection fee we estimate about sixty six thousand, and then of course our uh, street contract maintenance with TDOT that covers our, our mowing and litter pickup. It's pretty standard every year. We get about the same amount, which is 4,220. On the um, recreation fee, uh, fees that we receive um, and other um, revenues that we receive that we have classified in this section, we anticipate getting the uh, TML or the PEP driver's safety grant. Um, we anticipate getting about 5,000 in uh, um, fees and commissions from transit applications. Um, police security services, we provide services to uh, a couple of um, businesses, uh, especially around the holidays, and we estimate about $500 for that. Veterans Memorial Wall, we estimate about 400 in um, purchase of bricks. The league fees, um, normally we would have this line item at $8,000 with the, the uh, that's the fee that we require for the rental of the um, ball fields and the league that um, runs that, they generally pay the city $8,000. We kind of split that in half this year because they are not going to be having their spring ball. 
Um, and then uh, we do receive uh, a few other uh, sources of revenue that we uh, credit to that line item. Uh, for pavilion rentals or recreation fees, the thousand, we budgeted $1,000. That's for pavilion rentals. Field rentals, um, we only estimated about 500 for the field rentals. Uh, Multi-purpose building, we, since that is not being rented out right now, I'm not sure when that will go back online as far as it being able to rent it out. We anticipated a little bit of decline in that for next year, so we um, only budgeted 6500 for that uh, multi-purpose building, which is uh, revenue 34748. The next section is the library. These are fees and um, revenue streams for the library. We anticipate about $2,000 for the fines and penalties, uh, about $500 for any donations, uh, about $6,000 for copies, $4,500 for faxes, uh, $250 for lost books, $100 for lost cards, $100 for uh, sale of used books, and $100 for the uh, revenue from the children's program. That section totals $13,550. The next section is our court fines. For our city court fines and cost, we, uh, we took that down just a little bit, um, you know, due to the uh, current situation, we anticipate that to be, to drop down just a little bit. So we estimate about 260,000 from Rutherford County. We estimate about 45,000. And from the state of Tennessee, we estimate about 5,000. E-citation fees, we estimate about 2,000. And E-citation, uh, the $4 fee, we estimate about 10,000. Uh, DUI impound fees, we estimate about 1,500. Sex offender registry fees, um, 2,500. And the section for court fines is $326,000. The next section is our other revenue section, which is um, miscellaneous type revenue. Um, we estimated, uh, let me get back up here to the top. Oh, hang on, hang on. Okay. Hang on just a moment. My screen just kind of went away on me. Glenn, help. <laughs> okay, here we go. I think. Yeah. Drag up your toolbar over on the right side. Okay, hang on, guys. We got a little. I don't know why it does that. It just takes off. It's way over here. It needs to go way back. I can't see the little this, little. this little arrow right there. Oh, here it is. It's way over here. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's scroll down. Let me see. No. That goes back up. <laughs> okay. Go way down. Okay. Too far? No. Up a little more. Okay. That's good. Okay. Okay, now let's go. Um, <clears throat> interest earnings. Um, you know, due to the new plan that we're in, um, <clears throat> we should see around 80000 Um They have already dropped the interest rate a little bit. As you can see, we're forecasting about 100, 101000 So due to the drop in the interest rate, I went ahead and dropped that down to 80000 uh, We anticipate... Um, selling some items on gov deals for the general fund items uh, or general items uh, $1,500 fixed assets about 4,000 police supplies about 1,500 and police um, uh, fixed assets around 4,000 um, we receive um, grants from the governor highway safety grant and we anticipate that to be around 10,000 we anticipated receiving about 2,000 from, from the uh, Howl at the Moon event. Uh, we anticipate about 8,000 from the Old Timers Festival, 4,000 from the pageant, about $300 from a donation for the fire department. Um, and we have a small, do uh, small fire training revenue. This is um, where outside sources are getting training and they uh, are paying the city for that training. Uh, we estimate about $50 on that. Other finance sources, which is a, a various host of miscellaneous um, revenues, it could be a refund, um, 
an overpayment. <coughs> Um, and then we anticipate um, getting about $1,000 from the Verizon Windstream um, right away. And the last item on the revenue side is the recycle, uh, recyclable um, items that we have. And we estimate uh, receiving about $400. So for our other revenue section, we estimate about $124,750. For the total revenues for all sections in the uh, general fund, we estimate the revenues to be approximately $23,557,290. And of course, you have your little sneak peek there at the bottom. Um, in, the, in the following um, pages, we'll go over expenses. But as of today, the total expenditures are around 21,653,000, which leaves us a surplus of 1,904,000. Now, out of that 1,904,000, we have the governor's grant in there of 820,000. So we can't, um, you know, we can only use that for specific items. So. Uh, right now, we have approximately $1.1 million for um, capital or items or um, increase in operating expenses. And we'll go over those, like I said, again on Monday night. Okay, we're at the bottom of the revenue section. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to do so. Not hearing any questions, we'll move on to the expenses. Just want to verify that you can hear me. <coughs> it, somebody yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's start with the um, legislative board. And like the mayor said um, earlier in the beginning of our meeting, he mentioned that at this point we are not, um, we have not built in to the um, general fund expenses, any type of wage increase. Um, we'll review that again in January or, um, you know, at, at the board's discretion. So pretty much what you're gonna see for the 2021 budget is gonna pretty much mirror the 1920 budget and be very close to forecast budget. Um, I'm not gonna, there's a few departments I probably won't go line by line just because there's not enough increases to be, you know, go down through there. Um, and we'll just talk in, in general in totals. And I will uh, point out anything that I feel is, ne is important that you might want to, to know about. So if you see for the legislative board, the um, budget is 157,664, which is very comparable to last year's budget and very comparable to the forecast. Um, Anybody have any questions on the legislative board? I will stop after each so, department just to give everybody time to absorb. So, so this board here, is, is that the mayor, mayor and alderman board? Yes, that is uh, the mayor and alderman. Is that with salaries and everything in there? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The next department is our judicial department, and that's our judge and our uh, attorney, city attorney. You'll see the uh, city attorney did request a couple of um, increases. He would like to attend uh, a couple of conferences, and then there's a little bit of travel associated with that, and that is basically the only uh, increases that we added to that department, um, and that, that was very minimum. If you compare last year's budget to 163, this year's 165. Any questions on judicial? Okay, moving on to city court. Um, no major increases there. Um, probably the only one is in, in the office supplies and materials. We did increase that by 3,000 for um, traffic school material. And you'll notice that the, uh, the budget is 126 in that department versus 122 prior year versus the forecast of 124. So the numbers are staying pretty consistent there. Any questions on court? Okay, moving on to city administrator. Uh, we did not make hardly any uh, changes to this department. If you'll notice the totals at the bottom, 
or I think about $900 difference. Um, I do want to mention this is one of the departments that we allocate wages to, uh, and spread it out amongst other funds. Uh, if you'll notice, um, object code 129 says other wages, and right now it's still at the 124310 which is what we um, you know, allocated to uh, water, tre water treatment plant, the sewer uh, department, the water department, and the stormwater department. Because there are a few departments that do a lot of work for other funds. Um, so we do allocate those. Some of the expense for that department, we allocate it out to other funds. Any questions on city administrator? Is, is that for both? Both administrators, the assistant also? Yes, it is. Okay. Is so, that with also the uh, combined with the bookkeeper? I mean, the uh, recorder? No. The, no, the city recorder, or the uh, assistant city administrator position that you're talking of? Um, I mean, is that? Assist, admin assistant for the city administrator is um, in the city recorder department, which is the department we're going to look at next. Okay, looking at city recorder, um, we have left that, you know, the city recorder um, and the grant writer are in this uh, department. Um, due to the you'll see a little bit of difference because um, we didn't have all the wages in the year for the full amount um, so therefore the budget was reduced a little bit in that department any questions about the city recorder yeah is, so is that position still available or is that position how is that working yeah, this the grant writer position has been filled the administrative assistant position has not been filled yet. All right, but it says city recorder. That's the department. <sighs> That's the department. Yes, sir. Any other questions on the city recorder department? Okay, let's move on to the tax department. Uh, we didn't make any changes here. You'll notice the budget is just a couple hundred dollars different than it was last year. Any questions on tax department? Moving on to finance which is my department and my staff. Uh, the biggest change in this department was that um, we did not have to budget for bank service charges for 2021. Uh, those went away with the new program that we are now in. So that's a savings of about $16,000. Any questions on finance? Moving on to HR. Um, didn't make any major major changes there, um, just very minor. Uh, we we still left uh, you know a little bit of money in the other professional services for any upcoming uh, legal uh, unknowns. Any questions about HR? Moving on to engineering. If you'll notice, we didn't make, we made very little changes there. Um, the budget is staying about the same as it did the prior year. Any questions for engineering? Okay, our next department is IT. Um, IT department, um, is down a little bit and the reason it's down is because we took out some capital well not it was actually not capital it was some um, other professional services that we had budgeted for for the security assessment and the nc3 readiness that was um, a one-time um, expense for fiscal year 1920 so we did not have to rebudget that for 2021 
So that's why you see the difference there between the 535 and the 502. Any questions about IT? Phyllis or Glenn, can you talk uh, real quick about the line item 233 uh, subscriptions and newspapers and periodicals dropping? Like a significant drop there. Yes, we only we have to pay um, a vi for a virus protector virus protector every three years and I think 1920 is the year that we're supposed to pay for that so we won't have to rebudget that for next year if I'm correct we I have no clue what he said. Can anybody hear him? No. Okay. Let's so no. the phone if you don't mind. Right. So what that means is the that line out of this maintenance that we pay yearly on different software products and schools that we have. So sometimes the vendor will offer us one, two or three year renewals and if we do a three year renewal it's at a, a pretty big discount. So when we do those, they come up in renewal kind of in staggered periods like this product may come up this year while this other product has one year left and this one has two years left on that initial uh, contract so that's why that fluctuates like that um, and I think we just renewed something for three years last year or, or, or something like that uh, so that's why that number is down more this year is that the answer to the question any other questions about IT Okay, we'll move on down to planning. Um, you'll notice there's a pretty significant difference in planning between the budget for 1920 and the budget for 2021, and that's due to um, one time expense that we had in 1920 for the zoning ordinance update, which was 100 and around 125,000. So we took that 125,000 out because that will not be a recurring charge. And that dropped that budget down to 133,906. Um, any questions about that? And about the um, planning department? Codes administration. Total for the budget is 658,000. Um, again, they had a one-time expense in 1920 for the impact fee study, and that was about 75,000. Uh, we took. Um, a big portion of that out, which dropped that budget down to uh, 658000 <coughs> Any questions about codes? Okay. Moving on to City Hall. Um, if you'll notice, um, City Hall budget is 557000 That's because we did not we do not have some reoccurring charges in 2021 that we had in 1920. Um, and if you'll look at previous years, we're running around fi uh, mid 500s, and so we should be back on track to being about the mid 500,000. And we may even come in a little bit under this year because uh, we are expecting some credits, um, significant credits on our insurance this year. Um, any questions about City Hall? Okay, moving on to the police department. Okay, if you, let's jump down to the bottom of the police department and you'll notice that last year we had a budget of $9.3 million. And that's because we had a lot of capital built in. We had a bunch of vehicles, some e-citation software, um, some radios, um, uh, other miscellaneous items. When we take those items out, um, we took those items out, but we did add some things back. So. Um, the budget is going to be at 8.2 million and if you look at my screen um, a couple columns over I've got some explanations 
of, of the line items that increased uh, in the overtime. Uh, he had asked for about $54,000 in additional funding for overtime. If you've noticed in prior years, his overtime uh, has gone up. Um, you know, if we can ever get all these positions filled, um, we hope that that will, number will go down. We did increase the employee education and training. Um, we left that, we put that at 70,000 because if we do fill some of these unfilled positions, they're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna need to send them to training. So we wanted to put that in there uh, for that purpose. Printing is, uh, we didn't have any increase there. Um, had a little bit of an increase on membership fees and tuition. Um, and that's just to cover general increases in various organizations, um, increase for 2021. And the uh, repair and maintenance line, we increased that because um, with our CAD software, there's annual uh, maintenance and uh, that maintenance goes up every year. So we've um, increased that line item to cover the annual increase in the, the CAD maintenance. Okay, travel, the chief had asked for his travel line item to be increased to about 5,000. Uh, he had asked for his, of course, with travel, you're, um, a lot of times you'll have meals and per diem that will go up. So the next line down, we increase that by 2250. Um, we took out some things out of line 320 that were non-reoccurring. Um, and then the chief had, um, he'd asked for a little bit increases in food, about $1,000 for food, and that's for like when we host training events. And then he asked for an increase in the janitorial supplies of about $1,000. And he asked for an increase of about $4,000 on the K-9 unit, and this is to cover additional expenses now that we have three uh, K-9s. Um, you know, this covers vet, food, and other purchases needed. Um, that pretty much wraps up the police department. Anybody have any questions? I have a question. Um, Chief Walker brought up an assistant position he wanted to put back. Is that going back in? That would be discussed on Monday with the capital requests. So the assistant chief position would be then? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, our next department is the fire department. Um, jump on down here to the, to the bottom. Um, and you'll notice the budget did go down and that's because we did take out a non-recurring expense of a, of a truck and that was around 54,000. And then we, um, we have some other line items that we moved around um, as far as um, we increased his overtime. We, um, we decreased the hourly line that's because a lot of the, the PRN program is pretty much go gone away. I think we only have about four uh, PRNs uh, where we used to have anywhere from, from 10 to 20. Um, so it, what he what we did was we took reduced that hourly line and we moved some of that over to overtime. Um, the chief asked for a ten thousand dollar increase in employee education and training, and we increased uh, the repair and maintenance on the building by three thousand, approximately three thousand. We increased the travel by approximately two thousand, and uh, meals and entertainment approximately 2,000. We increased uh, books by about 500, and we increased um, medical supplies by about 5,000. And that's, um, we did add uh, 3,700 to the hazmat confined space, and that pretty much uh, wraps up the increases for the fire department in their operating expense. Do I have any questions on the fire department? Phyllis, I don't know if, if either you or Nick uh, can speak about this, but 259, other professional services, um, the um, changes there. Yes, in, um, in 1920, 
Uh, we, let me think here. In 1920, we added um, some new expenses for um, ESO annual maintenance and some physicals. Um, this, and for 2021, we're basically only budgeting for um, the physicals, which are $185 a person for 50 employees and $465 for hazmat physicals for 15 additional employees. So we basically just kind of took some things out and then um, realigned that line item with, with um, his, the, the physicals that he was requiring. I think in previous years, he hadn't required those specific type of physicals. And last year, we started uh, uh, using those. And then you'll, if you'll notice the forecast, the forecast number is pretty high in that, the 124,000. And that's where we had the uh, engineering services for the fire station was paid out of that line item. Any other questions? Okay, our next department is emergency services. And there's really not much in, left in this department. Um, we have some annual maintenance. Um, this is, mainly has to do with our hazmat um, vehicle and uh, any hazmat supplies or expenses that we have. So we have $5,000 for the repair and maintenance. And then uh, we have uh, $10,000 for which is standard that we have every year for our hazmat truck equipment. And then we have our nonprofits in here for uh, the Rutherford County, um, it's not EMA anymore, I don't guess it's the public safety officer in um, box 100. And we'll go over nonprofits at the, at, at the very end too. Any questions about emergency services? The next department is highways and streets. Um, that budget is pretty much a mirror of previous year. Um, we might have taken a couple line items down, a couple line items up, but we pretty much kept the overall uh, budget the same. Any questions about highways and streets? Our next department is fleet. Um, I do know that we increased the police fleet services by 10,000 and we added 25,000 for the fire department fleet services. As you know, we're doing more, um, more work on our, with our fire department and their vehicles. Um, those two increases um, are what make up the difference between what we budgeted last year and what we're budgeting this year. The th Any questions about fleet? And I, I think it's to be said and we most of us know this, but with the, the fleet services for the fire department, that is saving us quite a bit of money and time having to farm that out to an outside service versus having to us do it in-house. Our next department is culture, and basically this is um, where we have some of our nonprofits uh, budgeted in this, uh, in this area, and we'll go over those shortly. Parks and Rec, um, we budgeted 960 last year, we're budgeting 957,000 uh, for 2021. Uh, we had a couple of increases, a couple of decreases, but in, in total, uh, we did keep the budget about the same. And I do want to mention that we moved $10,000 from PR budget to uh, the Parks and Rec budget for advertising. and felt that the, uh, with our new um, Parks and Rec uh, planner that um, he, would, so he would utilize those, that funding um, for any type of Parks and Rec events. Any questions about Parks and Rec? Okay, we're moving on to library. Um, Last year we budgeted 738. This year we're only budgeting 710. And it looks like the um, the main uh, the main difference here is we did not rebudget for the outside trim paint, which is line item 266, which is the repair and maintenance on the building. 
Um, we hope to have that completed by the year end because it was budgeted in the, in the current fiscal year. So we took out that 25000 and that pretty much uh, explains the difference between the previous year budget and the current year, the com upcoming budget. Any questions on that on the library? Economic development. Their previous budget was 314. Um, their current, their new budget, upcoming budget has increased by about 10,000. Um, and that has to do with some increases in clothing allowance, increases in training, um, a decrease in the Industrial Development Board, um, increase in travel for our um, different shows that um, Tom is attending in 2021. And that pretty much covers economic development. Any questions for economic development? Okay, we'll move on to public relations. Um, again, this is a department that we have a, an expense for 1920 that's not going to be reoccurring in 2021, and that was the upgrade of our um, Channel 3 system. Um, so we took that $200,000 out, and if you'll notice, uh, we're within five or $6,000 of last year's budget when you take that $200,000 out. Also, with 237, that ten thousand dollar adjustment that you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. is on there. Right. Any questions about public relations? Okay. And the next section is basically our bond, principal, and interest payments for general fund. Uh, let see. We did have some that dropped off. We had the Motorola. Um, capital program uh, that one was paid off in September of 19 so that will not reoccur and some of our other um, some of our other other bond debt has you know also reduced drastically um, so instead of uh, our bond in a debt service payments have dropped from two two million eight to one million eight forty any questions on debt service? Okay, moving down to our last section of the general fund expenses. Um, we This is pretty much where we do transfers out to other funds. Um, every year we pretty much transfer out 30000 to the drug fund, and then we cover the cost um, of... We donate to the senior center fund basically the cost of the three employees that um, are in the budget, and that total is 104,240. And that's taking the two full-time employees, one part-time employee, and um, allocating that back to them. Do I have any questions? Okay. That that um, that pretty much wraps up our general fund. I'm, I'm gonna just go back over and review our uh, revenue and our expenses. We have uh, expenses. We had revenues of twenty three million five hundred fifty seven thousand two hundred ninety. We have expenditures of twenty one million six hundred fifty three one seventy six. Again, that was without any kind of wage increases, and that's without any kind of capital or uh, any major increases in operating. And we'll we'll go over those on Monday night. Um, so, if I have no more questions on that, we'll move on to the nonprofits. And if I can find the nonprofit sheet, hmm, not sure where. <laughs> I minimize that. Oh, well, yeah, it's in that. Okay, here we go. Okay. In our nonprofits on the um, far right hand column, uh, the amount that we have the column headed is amount requested REQ for budget 2021. In that total column, there are the amounts that have been requested. Uh, that is not what we have built into the budget. Pretty much what we have currently built in the budget is prior year's expenses for nonprofits. 
Um, we do we did have a couple that did not, did not request anything for 2021, and that was the um, food bank and the um, Smarter Laverne Assistance Coalition. And we're not even sure the coalition is still existing. We haven't uh, haven't heard from them in a couple of years, so they did not send anything in. I do want to add that we did have a late. Uh, addition and it really probably wasn't late but it had gotten hung up in my spam um, and that was the um, transit uh, uh, what tra transient alliance uh, yeah. transient alliance of middle Tennessee they had requested $500 so I'll be updating that sheet with, with that information. Um, and if you see, uh, with all the requests for this year, it equals up to about 263,000. Now we do already, we do already have some of these, um, you know, built into our budget. I have already changed the industrial development board to 10,000 um, <coughs> instead of the 20 that we budgeted last year. So um, not sure. Mayor, what you want to do on the nonprofits? If you um, want to uh, make some decisions on that, and we'll present that with the final budget. Yes, with the um, with this, I've been looking at it, and basically for those that requested last year um, during our budget cycle to go ahead, if they've requested this year, keep them at the same level that we did last year. And when we include in the increase with the Industrial Development Board and the um, Rutherford County Emergency Management Agency director's salary, I think we come out uh, 11 to 12, somewhere in between there, $1,000 um, lower than we were budgeted for uh, last year. And we'll, and, we'll be... And Mayor, is that... Or go ahead. We'll send out a revised uh, sheet in the next couple of days. So, so what you're saying, Mayor, is you want to keep it like it was last year without the increases? That's what I would prefer, yes, considering we're going into currently what looks like a recession in our economy. We're not sure as far as where we're at or where we're going to be. Right. I agree. Thanks. Okay, Thursday night we will be having all of our other funds, which consist of uh, um, streets capital, uh, state street aid, stormwater, um, police impact, seniors, uh, water and sewer. Um, so we'll be doing the same thing Thursday night, 530. Um, I will, I think... I'm pretty sure I emailed your pack, your packets out today for that. If you need a hard copy, you can swing by City Hall and pick up a hard copy. Uh, Bruce will have those, and we'll be here tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, and if you need anything else from us, please let us know. And if I make any revisions to anything, I'll send you uh, updated copies. So this will be the same hey, form. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Phyllis, is it okay that I schedule, you know, I don't know, a little time with you to, I, I have some questions on what went over tonight. I just didn't want to take up everyone's time with the, how we're doing it. Is that possible? I just schedule something with you and, and come in and go over a couple things. Sure. That'll be fine. And, and of course we'll, we'll make all accommodations to protect us both, you know, with right. what our current situation. Thank right. you. So the next budget workshop will be held Thursday at 530. It will be the same format and the same process. Um, does anybody have any other questions about um, revenues and the expenses and nonprofits that we've gone through? Mayor, I do have, I have several questions I've been writing down and it's okay, I'll just go through Phyllis with those. Okay, anybody else have any other questions? Okay, I call this budget workshop adjourned.